Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Today I have got an awesome freezer meal video to share with you. So I hope that you stick around because today we are talking all about budget freezer meals. We can all use some budget meals and if you're busy like I am, freezer meals also come in handy. So all of these meals come in at under $7 per meal and serve between four and six people. I'm also going to be sharing the cost breakdown of the ingredients. First up, as a vegetarian option, I'm going to be making some delicious black bean burgers that you can freeze and make ahead of time. These make great lunches throughout the week or a good dinner. I'm also going to be sharing a lasagna casserole bake that tastes almost like lasagna but is a lot less work and that you can make ahead of time for a quick weeknight meal. Up next is a super easy Swiss chicken bake with broccoli and this one is delicious. And last but not least, least is a cranberry chicken dish that uses fresh cranberries. So that is what I'm going to be sharing with you today. Let's get started. Once again, I am so excited to be partnering with Mizen for today's freezer meal video. If you guys have been watching my videos, you know that I've been partnering with them for about six months now to showcase their awesome knives and their nonstick pans. And today I'm going to be sharing the awesome chef's knife. So I'll talk more about it later, but if you guys want to get one of your own, you can go to Mizen dot com slash Jen for 20% off your first order. Okay, so first up, we're going to make the black bean burgers. And here are the ingredients you'll need for these black beans, hot sauce, cilantro, green onion, cumin, coriander, a couple eggs, two tablespoons of flour, and some garlic. You'll also need some corn chips or tortilla chips, which will be used as a binder. So here is the cost breakdown for the black bean burgers. And just so you guys are aware, I priced all of my groceries today using Walmart's prices. I think that is probably overall in this country the most uh, accessible. I think you could definitely get some of these ingredients cheaper if you have an Aldi or another discount store near you. I also did not count basic pantry items like flour and salt and oil and spices in this total, so keep that in mind as well. So for the black bean burgers, this recipe serves six. You'll need two cans of black beans. That comes in at $1.16. The eggs, we're going to count that in the lasagna bake. I obviously will purchase a dozen and use two for this recipe and two for the other one. Green onions come in at 50 cents, 78 cents, cents for the cilantro, 45 cents for the garlic, $1.74 for tortilla chips, and then 88 cents for buns for a grand total of $5.51. For pantry items for this recipe, you'll need flour, hot sauce, cumin, coriander, salt, pepper, and oil. I do think you could make these without the coriander because they have cilantro in them, so if you don't have that on hand and you don't want to purchase it, that is totally optional. I started out by rinsing my black beans and I'm going to pour them out onto a cookie sheet that I've lined with paper towels just to make sure that they get very, very dry. You want to make sure that they aren't too wet. Otherwise, the burger patties will be very um, hard to kind of pull together. Next up, I'm going to dice up some green onion. You'll need four of these for the recipe. The food processor is going to dice these up as well, but I do like to finely chop them just so I don't end up with any big pieces in the final burger. Personally, I think that a good chef's knife is probably one of the most important tools that you can have when you're cooking in the kitchen, if not the most important tool. And I've been cooking with these Mise-en chef's knives for over six months now, and I can honestly tell you they are my absolute favorite knives. They are so sharp, and I just love cooking with them. They make cooking so much easier and quicker, and honestly, more enjoyable when you have a really sharp knife like this. The best part about buying from Mise-en is that you can get a really good quality chef's knife at an awesome price and they really take the confusion out of knife buying they've eliminated all of the marketing jargon and overwhelming choices and so their knives are actually designed to replace an entire set of knives which is awesome Mise and knives are made to last a lifetime and they have over 5,000 five-star reviews on their website. So if you guys want to get your own Mise and Chef's knife, or maybe you want to get one of these as a gift for somebody for the holidays coming up, that would also be a great option. You can go to Mise.com slash Jen for 20% off your first order. That's Mise.com slash Jen for 20% off your first order. You will not regret it. So I've chopped up my green onion, my salon 
cilantro and my garlic and I'm just going to give that a good mince. Again, really when you're cooking with a food processor, which we're gonna mix these black bean burgers up with, you don't have to you know, mince everything super finely because the food processor will continue to do that, but I do like to give them a little bit of a dice just to make sure that all the pieces are uniform. So in with those veggies, I'm going to mix in two eggs and some flour, and this is going to be the binding agent for the black bean burgers. Now, if you wanted to make these vegan, I think you could go ahead and substitute flax eggs for the regular eggs. I haven't personally tried that, but I do think that it would probably work well if you wanted to keep this plant-based. I'll also have this uh, recipe typed out down below in a printable if you want to click on that link and download that for your own use, and all of the other recipes will be linked as well. To the bowl, we're going to add one teaspoon of hot sauce. I'm using sriracha, and then I'm also going to add some herbs. So I'm going to add some cumin, um, some ground cumin, some ground coriander, and some salt and pepper. Um, I know I mentioned this before, but I do think you could go without the coriander if you didn't have it and you didn't want to purchase it, um, just because, again, you have the cilantro in there and they're kind of the same flavor. So once those herbs and spices are in, I'm going to give that a stir, and then I'm going to pull out my food processor, and I'll start by grinding up my tortilla chips. Now, I think the original recipe wanted you to use like corn tortilla chips. I only had Fritos on hand, so that's what I used, and it worked out just fine. I even think you could probably use breadcrumbs or panko breadcrumbs or something like that. I think this is pretty flexible. So I'm just going to pulse those until they become a fine powder. After the chips are crushed up, I went ahead and poured in my black beans, and I'm just going to pulse those until I get sort of a crumbly texture. And then I'm pouring in my egg and flour and veggie mixture, and just go ahead and process that until the whole mixture becomes smooth. Now, you won't be able to form this into burger patties right away because the mixture will be quite wet, almost like a hummus. So what I did was I went ahead and spread this mixture out on a plate, um, and then I covered it with plastic wrap and put it in the freezer. One trick that I have for you guys, whether it's like some sort of bean paste or I don't know, like a dough or something like that. If you can spread it out into a thinner layer, like on a plate rather than put it in a bowl, it will actually chill a lot faster. So once the mixture was chilled, I removed it and I'm just going to form it into six equal portions and I'm putting it on a baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. We're actually going to use this to sort of flatten the patties and freeze them. So I'm just shaping these and then I'll put a piece of um, parchment paper on top, flatten them down, and then I'm going to stick the whole thing in the freezer. This is the freezer meal portion part of this uh, and wait until they're frozen solid. Now you can go ahead and cook these up right away, but I just wanted to show the versatility of this because I don't often do a whole lot of vegetarian meals and I sometimes get requests for those. And I have to tell you, these are super delicious. I would definitely recommend them. So here's what the patties look like after I flatten them out. They do not look super pretty, but I promise miss you. <laughs> They will be good. Uh, like I said, popping the whole thing into the freezer uh, with the tray and I'm going to let those harden up until they are firm. After they're firm, you can go ahead and put them in a Ziploc bag. Freezing them like this allows them to stay separated when you put them in a bag. When you want to cook these, all you have to do is heat up a skillet with a little bit of oil. I used avocado oil and you can cook them for about four to five minutes on each side until they are heated through and crispy on the outside and then you can serve these however you want you can serve them on a salad but on this day I had it on a bun with some cheese and lettuce and tomato and mayo with a side of chips and it was so delicious totally recommend you make this okay so for the lasagna bake you'll need one pound of pasta I'm using orchetti you'll need three cups of cottage cheese a container of or a jar of spaghetti sauce some dried parsley parmesan two eggs a pound of ground beef, one onion, and four cups of mozzarella cheese. Here's the cost breakdown for the lasagna bake casserole. I also wanted to mention that I will have a printable shopping list as well as the recipes linked down below. If you would like to download that, you can use that link. So for this, we're gonna need one pound of ground beef, which comes out to $3.96, about 54 cents for an onion, 82 cents for a pound of pasta shells, $3.58 for mozzarella, $1.70, for a container of cottage cheese, $1.20 for the eggs, 
$2.67 for the Parmesan cheese, although some of you probably have this on hand already, and then $1.28 for a jar of pasta sauce. You'll need salt, pepper, and dried parsley for your pantry items, and the total for this meal is $15.81. However, it does serve eight, and so that comes out to about $7.91 for each four-serving meal. So in my skillet here, I'm just browning up my ground beef and onion. I also seasoned that with a little bit of salt and pepper. Here I'm actually using one of Misen's nonstick pans. I've done a video on those as well, and they are great too. Uh, into a pot of salted boiling water, I'm going to add one pound of the orecchietti pasta. You could also use the small shells. I'm gonna cook those until they're al dente and then drain them in the sink and just give them a little bit of rinse with some cool water to keep them from sticking. So as not to dirty an extra bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and mix my pasta together in the same pot. So I'm putting in three cups of cottage cheese, which is the same as a 24 ounce container, which is very convenient. I'm gonna give that a stir around so the pasta doesn't stick. And then into a bowl, I'm going to crack my two eggs and beat those up. I wanna make sure that I add those a little bit at a time, just because the pasta may still be a little bit warm and I don't want to end up with scrambled eggs. So to the pasta, I'm adding my two eggs, the dried parsley and the grated Parmesan. And I'm just gonna give that a good stir until everything is well incorporated. So to prepare this, I'm using just one freezer pan, but you could split this up into two smaller freezer pans if you wanted to make two trays of this at four servings each. I'm just using one. So just place the pasta mixture in the bottom and then we will layer it with the ground beef layer. And then on top of that, we'll go your jar of spaghetti sauce. Lastly, we're gonna sprinkle on the remainder of the mozzarella cheese. And if you're gonna bake this right away, you can go ahead and just cover it with foil and pop it into the oven. I would recommend cooking it covered for the first 40 minutes or so to keep it from drying out. But if you're going to put it in the freezer like I did, you can just go ahead and cover it with foil and then always obviously make sure that you label <laughs> label your freezer dishes because you will always tell yourself that you'll remember what's in there, but alas, you never will. And make sure you date it as well. I also sprayed the foil with some nonstick cooking spray to make sure that when I baked that, the cheese did not stick to it. So I picked up these labels at Walmart and they're actually supposed to be name tag labels, but they are the perfect size for freezer meals to basically just write the contents and the instructions on there and then slap it on top of the foil. So I'm just writing on here what it is in the baking instructions and this will go in the freezer until I am ready to bake it. When it's ready to bake, you can take it out probably about 24 hours in advance, let it thaw in the fridge and then bake as you normally would. I didn't share with you guys what this looked like baked, but I did bake a small portion of it just so I can taste it and it was very good. I would totally recommend it and it would work well with ground sausage too. Okay, so next up is the chicken and stuffing bake. For this, you're going to need one box of stuffing. I'm using turkey stuffing. You'll also need some cooked chicken breast and some cooked broccoli. Uh, shredded Swiss cheese. I actually used Gruyere because that's what I had in the fridge. One can of cream of chicken soup. And I also wanna point out that I did modify this recipe a little bit. Use one and a half cups of milk instead of the one cup that the recipe calls for. Here is the cost breakdown for the chicken, Swiss, and stuffing bake. It's 94 cents for the cream of chicken soup, 82 cents for the stuffing, $1.99 for one pound of chicken breast, a dollar for some frozen broccoli florets. I'm using fresh because that's what I had on hand, but the more budget friendly option is obviously the frozen. And then $2.08 for the shredded Swiss cheese, which comes out to $6.83. And then pantry items for this one are the milk, salt, and pepper. So I did this several days before, cooked my chicken and broccoli. To cook my chicken, I just put the chicken breast rest in a crock pot with some seasonings and some water and you can cook that on high for about three to four hours until the chicken is tender enough to shred. I'm using this all-purpose seasoning that I got from Imperfect Foods but you could also use salt and pepper if you wanted to. This is my favorite way to make um, cooked chicken because it doesn't dry out and the chicken comes out super tender. Um, I guess I'm lying. I put it on low heat instead of high heat but either way you can do low for eight hours or high for four hours. So here's what the chicken looks like when it's done. 
done cooking, you can see that it just shreds apart with a fork. And yeah, I use this way to um, make chicken salad as well. So to get started on the casserole, I'm gonna shred my Swiss cheese. You could totally buy this pre-shredded as well. Now I did make two batches of this chicken Swiss stuffing bake just to test it out so I could tell you guys if there were any modifications to make. One thing that I wanna make sure of is that I'm sharing recipes that I've already tried so I can give you any tips that you might need on those. I don't like to just throw things into a container or a bag and throw it in the freezer and say, okay, make this because it might not be good, right? So I would definitely recommend using Swiss cheese. I did use cheddar cheese with another batch of this and I didn't like it quite as well. So just a note there. So for the sauce for this, I'm going to use one can of cream of chicken soup and I'm just putting that into a bowl and then whisking that with one and a half cups of milk. Like I said, you do want to add more milk to this recipe than the recipe calls for because I found that when I only used one cup of milk, it was too dry. Next, I'm going to add the shredded cheese and just give that a stir around. So I'm going to mix in some of my liquid mixture with the chicken and broccoli, and then I'm going to use the rest of it to mix with the stuffing. Another uh, sort of tip that I have for this particular recipe is make sure that you moisten all of your stuffing really well. Uh, if you don't, it will be dry <laughs> and you definitely don't want that. So I'm just going to cut this bag open, pour it into the um, soup and milk and cheese mixture and give that a good stir. So I've sprayed my freezer meal dish and I'm first going to put in the stuffing mixture and then next I'll put in the additional liquid along with the cheese and the broccoli and the chicken. I tried to break up the large pieces of chicken as much as I could so that I didn't end up with any, um, you know, big pieces in there, but I kind of just stirred everything around to make sure that it was well combined and in an even layer. Okay, so the last step is just to sprinkle this with your additional shredded cheese and then you can go ahead and cover it with foil and pop it into the freezer. So I thought this had really good flavors. It actually reminds me of a dish that um, I made uh, many times before. It's a Paula Deen recipe with like chicken breast baked with um, a cream of chicken sauce and then stuffing on top. This is a little bit easier um, just because everything is all mixed together in a casserole. But like I said, I would definitely recommend adding that extra half cup of milk. You can also add extra salt and pepper if you want to. Um, just keep in mind that the cream of chicken soup is a little bit salty in and of itself. Um, so you don't want it to be too salty, obviously. So I'm just going to label this, put the sticker on the top and get it into the freezer. Here is the one that I baked up with the cheddar cheese. You can see how it looked when it came out of the oven. My kids were not huge fans of this, but you know what? They've been super picky lately. Not super picky, but they've just been like sort of complainy about dinner and I'm kind of over it, but <laughs> for the most part, everyone liked it and I would definitely make it again. So next up is this cranberry chicken, which turned out really good. So for this recipe, you'll need some fresh cranberries, some chicken breast, flour, salt, pepper, a little bit of nutmeg, some brown sugar, vinegar, and butter, and a little bit of water. Here is the cost breakdown for the cranberry chicken. For a six serving recipe, you'll need one and a half pounds of chicken breast or about six chicken breasts. That comes out to $2.99. It's $1.98 for a bag of fresh cranberries, $1.26 for rice for serving this. And then the pantry items you'll need are flour, brown sugar, nutmeg, which I would consider optional in this recipe, salt, pepper, and then either oil or butter to saute the chicken. Overall, that comes out to $6.23. I'm going to start by dredging the chicken breast. So I'm just seasoning my flour with some salt and pepper, and then I will coat the chicken breasts one by one in the flour and put them in a skillet and saute them. I have two uh, baking dishes here or two freezer dishes here because I'm actually making eight chicken breasts. So enough for two uh, servings for us. And you're actually going to basically cook this recipe to completion on the stovetop and then freeze it. So when it comes time to thaw it out, all you have to do is pop it in the oven for maybe about 30 minutes to warm it up and it's done. Once the chicken was golden brown on either side, I removed it to the freezer pans and then I will start to make the sauce. 
So to the pan, I'm going to add some water to deglaze all of those brown bits on the bottom of the skillet. Next, I'll add in my cranberries. Uh, I was actually looking at the Aldi ad, and if you have an Aldi in your area, you can get cranberries for 99 cents, which I think is fantastic. I also added a pinch of nutmeg and the brown sugar to that. Um, now the vinegar, the recipe says is optional. I would recommend adding that because this did have a rather sweet flavor, and I forgot to actually include that in the recipe list. List, but you can use any type of vinegar that you have in your cupboard. Once the cranberries start to burst, you can add your chicken back to the sauce. And then this is going to simmer for about 30 minutes. And I have to tell you, this recipe, the chicken was so tender. Um, the only thing I would probably do differently with this particular recipe is I was I would maybe add less brown sugar. And I thought maybe too that I could add like some mustard or something because while the chicken was really good and the sauce was good, it was a little bit sweet. So once the chicken and the sauce was done cooking, I went ahead and removed the chicken breasts back into the freezer pans. And then I'm just going to uh, pour the cranberry sauce over the top. We actually ate one of these on this particular night. And then I froze the other one so that we could eat it later. Here's what the chicken looked like once I got it into the pans. I will say this is a really pretty dish and I would definitely make it again. Um, I think you could also consider adding maybe some chopped onion to it just maybe something to give it a little bit more of a savory flavor so I did uh, label this I actually labeled this before I got those labels from Walmart so I used a post-it note which works out just fine okay so here is how that looked like when we plated it up we had the cranberry chicken with some rice and some naan bread I also served a green salad on the side all right so that is gonna wrap it up for today's freezer meal video I hope that you guys enjoyed it let me know in the comments below if you're planning on making any of these dishes. I think that overall my favorite was probably the black bean burgers, although lasagna casserole was really good too. And thank you again to Misen for sponsoring today's video. If you guys want to get an awesome knife of your own for 20% off, you can go to misen.com slash Jen and grab yours. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.